So what is this talk all about? Um, about four or five years ago, I uh, actually built my own kitchen and sort of through that process, I discovered a few things um, and those things are uh, most, mostly about how we design products, um, particularly from a developer's view, because that's what I am, that's what we are, uh, generally speaking. So I just want to take you through sort of what I've learned and uh, some of the, the funny moments and, yeah, kind of share that with you so you guys can learn too. Just before I start, I'm going to uh, define what I mean by design in this context. So that's design that, uh, as it pertains to like digital products, um, it's going to cover stuff like UX, which is kind of like the, the why you do something, um, and, uh, and UI, which is the kind of, you know, it's the, the thing that the user interacts with um, that we, we, we build fairly frequently. Um, and yeah, so why is this important? Um, I, I think if I just had to pick one thing, it would be that we spend a lot of our times building software which is abstract and it can do a great many things. And we talk about bitemporality and um, these things enable us to do things on the front end, but if there's no focus on um, how that front end is utilized, then um, you know, it's just going to fall by the wayside. So without further ado, cover a bit of uh, DIY. Um, See, so yeah, I've got the enthusiasm, got the uh, crowbar ready to, to take things apart, and um, there's quite a bit of that. Um, as an aside, estimations, not everyone's favorite thing. I thought I was going to do this in two weeks. Uh, it took about two months, so there you go. And I had to take a, a week off just to, to, try, <laughs> to speed things along, so um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, um, as with all projects, it involved uh, do a great multiple things. You had to plan out like the electrics, the water, um, you know, installing the oven, positioning the oven, uh, the sink, we had to move the sink. So here's, here's more sort of positioning things. Also, this is before I joined Juxt. I did paint this ball orange. Don't know what the connection is, but uh, there you go. Interesting bit of history. In order to get all of these bits and pieces done right, I did have a go at designing things. Um, this is, I think it's called Sweet Home 3D, something like that. Uh, it is open source. So yeah, I, I, I did think about the process putting it all together, um, but of course, the implementation is where it starts to, uh, well, starts to differ. As I was building this, um, I've not done any of this before, really. Um, I think my, my, most of my experience is I helped someone knock down a wall when they were making like an open plan, uh, sort of kitchen, lounge. Um, but because of that, you can see I've stuck to my solid engineering principles. You know, you've got uh, extra, I, I don't know what they're called, but I'm going to call them valves on the, um, on the water pipes. So, you know, if, if the other ones don't work, then the next set should and should help, help you stop a leak. Um, you know, you can see on the flooring, you've just got like a waterproof membrane. You're trying to make sure, you know, you've got all that redundancy that you, you normally see in your, your software projects. Uh, and then finally in the middle, my, my cat is always stress testing everything jumping in the sink, doing all the stuff that you're not meant to do. Anyway, very helpful. So, so what is the problem? Um, if I've done all this safety, you know, built out the kitchen, um, you know, it, it works on my machine. Um, the problem in, in uh, when I was building the kitchen was the fit and finish. So a lot of the feedback I got was, well, that's, that's great, Mike. I'm glad, you know, you saved yourself some money, you did whatever. It's not as good as a professional builder, and that's fine. I'm not a professional builder, but it did get me thinking that we're professional developers, and a lot of the time we get given the role of being a designer. It's not always the case, but it, it happens fairly, fairly often. Um, and, yeah, it, it just kind of prompted me into sort of exploring this uh, a bit further. So I'm going to go into, so there's enough of the, uh, the kitchen, but I'm going to go into a technical example. This is a 
a genericized version of a table that I've seen in the wild. Um, and you know, it, it's displaying some data. But there are a lot of things you can do to improve it. And um, that's not to take away the work that goes into making the data possible to be displayed. But it just feels like you, know, you go 90% of the way and you've left a lot on the table. So uh, just by sticking to like one rule, um, which is, uh, yeah, data is the most important thing in tables. So try and un uh, avoid all decoration or as much as you can. Um, so you can see back here, there's sort of lots of lines. Uh, zebra striping is, is good here, but it's maybe a bit too defined. Um, and we have like reset table view. We have this drop down on the top left. Uh, users tend to like view things like an F-shaped pattern. We, we tend to like scan screens that way. So it's kind of a little bit um, obtrusive. Um, so being that, uh, also some of the ordering, um, it appears the tables, I think, I, yeah, so the sample data I didn't update, everything's got the same timestamp, but <laughs> in the real thing, it's, it's sorted by time, but you, there's, that kind of stuff's not obvious. Um, so this is um, what I've had to go at to sort of update that. Um, where, you, where you can see that it's being sorted on the left-hand side. Uh, columns like the uh, status, they have like a tiny color to kind of make scanning a little easier without kind of making everything else hard to read because it's going to draw your eyes towards the, towards the color. Uh, things like the, the label at the end. <clears throat> In the, the previous example, um, it was too long. It was often just being cut off anyway. So that's the best of a, a bad situation, really. That's the example. So yeah, if I've got any advice for, for, for everyone, it's uh, just do some more uh, do some exploring of your own. I mean, may, maybe for, for a kitchen as well, but primarily for, um, yeah, just, just getting involved in design. It's, um, I think a lot of the problems actually overlap anyway. For developers, if you want to learn a bit of design, or um, for designers, if you want to do a bit of uh, development, um, I know it's kind of all the rage with AI, like uh, art generation, if you just talked about um, this, sort of this talk going around that if you want to save your job as a designer, you should learn prompt engineering. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's almost there. It, they should just learn engineering. Um, and uh, the, the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with is um, details are incredibly important. Um, yeah, the work's never done. And also, you should have someone test your work. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'll take any questions. Can be about uh, building the kitchen. Oh, here we go. Andrea. Do you prefer now uh, assembling real tables or tables with AG <laughs> So the question was do I uh, prefer assembling real tables or uh, tables using AG Grid? Um, well, the, the, one of the options is AG Grid, so it must be the former um, by default. Okay. Um, I was wondering, so I think a lot of people might look at you know, a lot of engineers might look at that table. Yeah, so, so, so the question was um, if I have any um, resources or tips to sort of aid a developer who's interested in improving these sorts of tables, um, sort of how can they get started? Um, I think for me, I, I, uh, I got um, a book a while ago called uh, Refactoring UI. Um, I think it's by um, Adam Mathen. That was a really good intro. There's quite a lot of um, sort of other competitors out there these days. But yeah, there's, that's a paid for resource. I wish I had a, a free one to mind. Um, 
But uh, yeah, well, or, or just ask me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> not too many questions, but um, yeah, I, I think it was at least for me, it was it was pretty slow starting, so it, it wasn't you know an, an overnight thing. Um, still have loads to learn, so. Uh, Tables seem to me to be like, uh, I want to say terrible in general <laughs> for, for communicating information. Uh, so, like, what are you doing about like, information representation? Because that seems to be the job of design, actually. So, uh, so, so the question is, um, uh, tables seem to be a, a suboptimal way of uh, presenting information. <laughs> um, uh, it, it, like, do, do you think about data presentation? That seems to be a uh, a problem that is handed over to designers to solve, right? It has, this, this, this table has information, not just data. So, where is the information? Is my question. No, do we do we have like how do we track the information to this table, not just the data? That's the question. Uh, how do we track the flow of data? From sort of source until it gets to this table, or uh, you're trying to communicate this table or something, some UI is trying to communicate information, uh, and this is just data; it's undifferentiated data essentially. So, how do we, or how do you think about design to communicate information? Oh, this is very difficult. <laughs> uh, sorry, so, so let me just rephrase. So you're saying, uh, how do you think about um, how you present information? Like this, this data is almost in its raw form in the table. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, very good question. Um, I would say in terms of U, uh, UX workflow, um, I would want to have some sort of communication with users to sort of discover what it is they want to get out of the product, or really early on, what kind of a product do they want in the first place? Um, write that down, record it, whether it's a you know audio review, um, and then kind of wireframe that process of getting them from A to B. Maybe it's in this case, um, maybe it's that they they don't actually care about anything complete or incomplete. So this table's kind of irrelevant, and you've only got. Um, I mean, if we go to the other one, it's a little bit clearer. Um, yeah, you've only got sort of a handful, maybe half a dozen running cards. Maybe you'd, maybe the user only wants to monitor that. So you could end up with by doing that interview, and then yeah, just 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 following the sort of the rest of the process, like wireframing some of these. Uh, you might end up with something more like a sort of a card-based system, where you're going to have like one, two, three, four, five, six running processes, where you have this. It could be exactly the same data, but in a card with more detail. Um, I hope that. Sort of answers your question. So, any more? How, how do you yeah. like combat um, like design fatigue? If you're kind of a full stack mm. and you've like done your electrics and done all your pipe work and they're beautiful, but underneath the counters, the, the final bit is like the tiling or the cable, and you're just like, I'm done now. I've been doing this for two months. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, when, for the kitchen, that's that's like, that's definitely what I did. I'd um, I'd gone through and all of the major pieces of work. Um, oh, sorry, just to repeat the the question was how do you combat uh, design fatigue? Uh, yeah, so uh, I guess I guess like a lot of things with fatigue, it's kind of monitoring um, and also asking for help. I think having people. For, for the software side of things, having develop, having designers or having people with more design experience kind of help you along in just the same way as um, senior, so let's say, sort of more senior people or people who kind of know a product, helping to onboard people. Um, I think that can go a long way. All right. In your kitchen in CAD, did you sort of think about scenarios where you're actually using the kitchen? So I don't know, opening the oven door and the cupboard at the same time, do they block each other? Uh, yeah, so I did a, a bit of that. Um, I think the, the, ma the major things for me were, uh, I, yeah, doing a horrible job of showing it, but because uh, it's an L-shaped, uh, L-shaped, 
Uh, you can see around the corner I wanted to put my washing because I didn't have a, like a dryer. I wanted to sort of hide stuff around there to dry. Um, yeah, and just make, you know, uh, yeah, just, uh, uh, yeah, thinking about the, the doors opening, that was definitely part of the process. All right, well, thanks very much. Uh